Hello, I'm Bob Norton, founder and creator of Airtight Management. Welcome to our 101 Video Best Practices series. I know that these proven practices will help you become a better manager and leader. We also know that companies that use even a small fraction of them over time become market leaders and world-class companies in their space. These 101 best practices are just a small sample of over a thousand embedded in the airtight management six systems. Best practice number 13 is teams need a strong leader who understand these high performance team techniques, or at least most of them, and will enforce them. The leader creates the team and facilitates and coaches the team. They're a mediator, not a dictator, and they're not supposed to be a micromanager because we're dealing with professionals that can go off and do big chunks of work and then fit that into the overall project. But many final decisions need to be arbitrated or mediated and come to a leader of that team. So the idea that a high performance team or quote a self-managing team has no leader in my view is a myth and a fallacy. People want leadership, people need leadership, ultimately there's going to be disagreement and you don't want a democratic decision process because the people on the team by definition are diverse and have different experience and perspectives on what's important. So usually that team leader is kind of the business, the senior business person that understands the bigger picture of the finances and the market environment and those kinds of things. But obviously that depends on what the function of the team is. It could easily be the senior technical person on a team if it's a, a big software project or something like that. But the leader needs to create room for everyone to contribute and manage that environment in a way that will work out all the issues between the team. It's important that a team leader not micromanage a project in any way. So, as I said in a previous best practice video, a half a day's work or a full day's work is probably the minimum thing that a team ought to be talking about because you would rapidly accelerate the detail and the amount of communications overhead. So, even if you could do that by talking about weekly projects with more senior people, that's better. The leader must be accepted by the team, they ha and that means they have to have trust, they have to have the ability and the domain experience, they have to be thought of as fair and ethical, and of course they have to have knowledge of the project that allows them to do that. They should also be someone that can share the credit as well as the blame, which means limiting ego and limiting politics as the team goes. So that's the best practice of having a strong leader on every team. I'm Bob Norton for Airtight Management, and we'll see you in the next video.